Hey boys and girls, welcome to another episode of Lutherville. So for this one, we're going to be talking about how to build a shed for a portable generator. One of the craziest things about most portable generators is that they are not waterproof. Now I know that sounds crazy, right? I mean, motorcycles are waterproof, cars are waterproof. If we can make all of those engines run in the rain, why can't the engine of generators run in the rain? Especially when most people need to use them during times like a thunderstorm. Well, because generators are not waterproof, a lot of people build things like this, a little shed that they can put the generator in. Now the problem, of course, is overheating. So if you build one of these, what you need to do is put a lot of vents in the thing so that you can actually air it out and make sure that the generator inside is getting enough oxygen to keep running. And obviously, you also don't want the heat of the generator to be melting the shed. So I put this one together in, eh, it took me a good part of a day, like it probably took about maybe eight hours or so to put this whole thing together and build it and put in the screens and put in the vents and install the fan and all that sort of stuff. But it's been working really great. I have, I think about 60, 70 hours on the generator that it's been running in this shed with no problems. You know, it doesn't overheat. It doesn't uh, melt the plastic <laughs> or anything like that. And it's been working out really, really well. So let me show you a few uh, close-ups of the setup so you can kind of understand what I did. The shed is positioned about 40 feet away from the tiny house. And there's a 50-foot extension cord that runs from the generator to the RV plug. The base that it's sitting on is comprised of about 15 paving stones. And I never had to purchase paving stones before. I had no idea how cheap these things are. They're only like $1.50 a piece. So it only cost about 20 bucks to build the platform that the shed is sitting on. Most people who build these types of sheds will extend the exhaust pipe off of the generator and have it coming out one of the walls. I knew that that was not really necessary. I just took a bunch of other paving stones and bricks and kind of lined them up in order to use them as insulation because I knew that brick and stone is the best insulation that there is. I mean, what do they put on the bottom of the space shuttle? Ceramics, right? What do you build a kiln out of? Brick, right? I mean, this is the proper material to use to insulate things. And it has worked out really, really well. And of course, it's extremely economical because all of the bricks that are in there, again, probably cost about $10. So it's, it's not very expensive to do. I also took the time to ground the generator properly and have a ground rod on the outside. And to cool it off, I just got a cheap $15, $16 box fan. The reason that I did that is because box fans tend to move a heck of a lot of air. They can move about maybe 2,300 cubic feet per minute. And a lot of people who build these kind of sheds will install like an attic fan that costs $100 and it moves about one-tenth the amount of air. So not very effective. Now, most manufacturers do not suggest that you do this type of thing. They don't want you to put a generator inside of this shed. They would rather you use something like this, like a, a generator tent, and that's a way to keep it waterproof. And I just didn't really want to do that because most of these generator tents are really kind of flimsy, and I knew that the shed is going to be a lot more effective. A few final things that I should note uh, about the shed that I created is that the side vents are 16 by 16 vents and then the rear vents are 12 by 12. 
And the reason that I went with those sizes is simply because they were the largest vents that would fit on a shed of that size, which is a suncast shed made in the USA. So I, I hope that kind of gives you some ideas of what you can do and the sort of options that you have. Uh, there's a lot of sheds out there that people build and they have a lot of how-to videos. And like I said, I think there are a lot of things that people do which aren't really necessary. You can kind of get away with doing it in a much more simplistic way and it's still effective. You know, the most important thing is making sure that you have enough airflow around the generator and making sure that things aren't going to start to fall apart and catch on fire and things like that. So that's part of the reason I went with the Suncast because I felt that the resin plastic shed is a good idea. They're pretty economically priced. It would probably have cost about the same amount of money if I bought a bunch of plywood and decided to build something myself. And of course, the problem with plywood is that, well, it can rot after a while. If you spill gasoline on it, it the wood absorbs all the gas. And the last thing you really want is wood saturated with gasoline out in the desert. You know, probably not a good idea. So all of those reasons are the reasons that I went with the Suncast and put in the vents that I did. I also, I think you can tell from the photos, I added uh, some screens just I just bought plain old aluminum screen that you'd use in a window and I put that in there just to try to prevent bugs and things from getting inside. So that was it. It was a pretty simple kind of construction. It's been working out really well. In fact, these are photos of the generator shed after the very first storm. It probably rained really, really hard for about an hour with 25 to 30 mile an hour winds. I was very nervous to have the generator running under those conditions, but I figured, hey, let's give it a try. And as you can see here, the inside of the shed stayed completely dry. The outside, you can see the ground there is, is pretty wet. And this is one of the screens that was actually getting directly hit by 25, 30 mile an hour winds. And as you can see, there's just a couple of drops of water on the screen. So. For those of you who are wondering, the Suncast shed that I have is the BMS 2500. That's the exact model number. One last thing I should mention, uh, the tie downs. I also put the chains in the corners and I put tie downs into the ground. That's really not necessary at all. <laughs> it's very windy out in the desert. You can get sustained winds of about 30 miles an hour. You can get gusts that are 40, 50 miles an hour. And I thought, well, I don't want the shed to blow over. Well, once you put a, a 90 pound generator and a hundred pounds worth of paving stones inside that shed, the thing is not moving. So I actually had a fairly powerful windstorm right after I put the shed together and I hadn't purchased the chains and things for the tie downs yet and that shed didn't budge so really the tie downs are redundant I really didn't need to get those but just erring on the side of caution so I hope all of that was very helpful for you and thank you as usual for watching another episode of Lutherville and remember folks if your ambitions do not scare you they are not big enough <laughs>